In this video, I'll show how to create your own profiles and use them to build profile members. A profile can either be a 2D face or a profile can be a series of connected lines or curves. I'll first show how to create a profile from a 2D face. I have SketchUp open in top view, though a profile face can be created in any orientation. I'll use the line and two point arc tools to create this closed shape. Note that the back face material is showing. This won't necessarily cause problems, but it's good practice when dealing with profiles to always have the front material showing. So I'll right click on the face and choose Reverse Faces. My front material is set to yellow. I'll keep this face selected. On the Profile Builder toolbar, I'll click the first icon to open the Profile dialog. To create a profile from the selected face, I'll click the New Profile icon. I could accept the default name, but the best practice is to assign each profile a unique and descriptive name. So I'll name this Trench1. The selected face now appears in the Profile dialog, and its overall width and height are listed here as well. Among the many features that sets Profile Builder apart from SketchUp's native Follow Me tool is that it's parametric, which means, among other things, that various aspects of the profile member properties can be controlled and edited, even after the profile member has been created. I'll show this in detail in later videos, but for now I'll just change the width to 10 feet and press Tab to accept. Because the aspect ratio is locked, the height updates as well. Note that this doesn't update the shape I drew, but it will affect the profile members created from this profile. Also note the red dot in the center of the profile face. This is the default placement point, or the point that will follow the profile path. I'll change this to bottom left, and the dot moves to that corner. To use this profile, I'll click the Build tool. Orbiting into a 3D view, I'll click to start the profile member. If I'm standing at the start of the path, Facing along the path, the placement point is at my lower left. I'll continue clicking along points of the path. I can use the arrow keys to lock a direction, just like when using other SketchUp drawing tools. I'll tap the right arrow key for a segment in the red direction, and if I want this to be 40 feet long, I can type 40 feet and press Enter. Next, I'll tap the left arrow for another segment following green. I can even draw in the vertical direction when I tap the up arrow. I could also lock the current axis direction by holding the Shift key. While clicking path points, there are a few modifier keys I can use. The one you'll want to get to know well is Undo, which is the Delete or Backspace key. Tapping either key will undo the profile member one path point at a time. If you use Ctrl or Command Z instead, you'll undo the entire profile member. Before the profile member is complete, I can press the Home button to cycle through placement points or use the End button to change the rotation. When the profile member is finished, I can press Enter or Return, or press the Escape key. Or, starting another profile member, I can finish by right-clicking. The Finish option works like pressing Escape or Enter, or I can choose Close the Path for a closed loop. Note that the size of these profile members is much smaller than my original 2D face. This is because I set the exact width in the Profile dialog, which I can verify as 10 feet with the tape measure. Also note that each profile member is created as a group, which I can check in the Entity Info window. Now I'll show how to create a profile from a polyline, a connected chain of lines or curves. I've started a new file, and my previous profile is still the current one. Because I haven't saved this profile, it wouldn't appear if I had closed and restarted SketchUp, or if I create a new profile. I'll discuss saving and locating profiles later in this video. I'll draw two lines and an arc. To select these for creating a profile, I'll use the Smart Path Selection tool, which gives me control over how the profile members will be created. With Smart Path Selection, I can define the start and end of a set of lines or curves. This is relevant for a non-face profile like this one, and Smart Path Selection can also be used to define the start and end of a profile path, which I'll show a bit later. If I move my mouse to the lower line segment, closer to the free endpoint, the green indicates the profile start. I can move to the end of the arc to define the profile end, or I can double click and let Profile Builder complete the chain automatically. The profile end is red. 
I'll click to add this as a new profile and call it Metal 1. I'll set the width at 1 foot and its placement point at the bottom left. I can now erase the profile edges. Now I'll click Build and draw out some profile member segments. Because of the way I define this profile, I'm oriented in the same direction as the profile, in this case, standing right side up. And while standing at the start of the profile member, facing toward the direction of the profile path, front faces are to my right. If I had defined this profile with its start at the opposite end, front faces would be to my left. I'll undo. In addition to using Build to define segments by clicking points, there are three ways I can define the profile path in advance. First, I can draw a face, select the face, and click the Build Along Path tool. The profile goes around the face, with its bottom left corner following the edges of the face. I'll undo and erase one edge to change the path. I'll add more edges out here. I'll select all of the path edges, click Build Along Path, and again, the profile follows each path. But selecting the path this way gives me no control over how profile members are oriented. Just like how Smart Path Selection can define a profile's orientation, it can also define the path's orientation. Here I have some rectangular faces and edges, plus two arcs. I'll click Smart Path Selection. If I double-click here to start the path, Profile Builder will look for the most logical path, which would be this. But I want two separate paths so I'll press Escape to clear the selection. For the first path, this will be the start, I'll turn here, and this will be the end. To add a second path, I'll press Control, start here, and end here. I'll click Build Along Path, with these resulting front and back profile member faces. For the first profile member, if I'm standing at the start and facing toward the path direction, front faces are to my right. The same applies for the other profile member when I'm oriented like this. For a more practical example, I'll create and save a cornice profile. In a new SketchUp file, in top view, I'll create a 6x6 six six square and add some lines and an arc. I'll erase extra edges, reverse the face, and create a new profile called cornice. To save this profile, let's first see where profiles are stored. I'll open Extensions, Profile Builder, Preferences. By default, Profiles will go in my Documents folder, but I can change this to a folder I already have set up called My Profiles. I'll click OK. In the Profile dialog, I'll click Save Profile. I'll browse to the folder I set up, and I'll keep the name Cornus. Now I'll close and reopen SketchUp with this house model. Cornice appears because it was saved, and it's the last profile I used. If I activate any other profile, like one from the Samples folder, I can still find Cornice later. I'll click Profile Browser again, click my Home folder, and Cornice is here. I want the top of the Cornice to meet the top of the first floor wall, and this measurement is 11 feet. So I'll set the vertical offset to 11 feet, and I'll move the placement point to the top left corner. For the path, I'll use Smart Path Selection, starting below the bay window so that the green side is to the left. I'll end the path at the end of this wall. Then I'll click Build Along Path, and here is the cornice. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to edit profiles in Profile Builder.